Hey there, in today's podcast, I've got Gerard Amoyo on, who is a professional automotive photographer here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we talk about how you can create a full-time living with just a camera, some different creative alleyways, and how he was able to grow his Instagram from zero to 23,000 followers by networking and posting some amazing photos of cars online. I think there's a ton of value in this one, so turn it on in the background while you're working, grab a snack, and uh, hope you enjoy. How was, your, how was your Christmas? It was very chill, dude. Honestly, when the holiday season started, uh it was good that i didn't have much going on like it was a period of where i didn't have to really think about picking up a camera or doing anything mm-hmm. too crazy so yeah it's a nice time it to, was nice nice time to relax well hopefully the uh hopefully the wi-fi uh wi-fi gods are with us today for those of you guys watching Dude. um we tried when did we try to film this like two weeks ago three weeks ago uh, I can't, it was before christmas let me see it I'll, I'll look at my instagram dms real quick because we are literally <laughs> just going back and forth uh it looks like but like a week before christmas yeah so we try to film this and the wi-fi gods had other plans so we're uh december 15th yeah there you go yeah man um so almost a month ago dang bro that's crazy well yeah glad to have you back on bro um dude yeah man do it yeah get that lighting right yes sir (laughs) yeah i gotta get the lighting right (laughs) don't want any of that ugly ass glare no, I feel you. I'm, I'm about to get um, I'm about to get curtains for this thing behind me because in all my videos, it'll have like I have a light up here, and then mm-hmm. out of nowhere, it'll just become super sunny, and then like my whole shot gets so exposed, and it it sucks. So let me get a curtain that for that too. Sucks. But yeah, dude, glad to have you back on. Um, like I said, for the people watching, we tried this a while ago. We're kind of just doing a, a second round to it. Got cut up, but yeah, man, I think a, a good place to start is just telling the people a little bit about you, how old you are, kind of what you do, and then we'll dive right into it. <laughs> All right. What's my name again? All right. So my name's Gerard. I'm 23 years old. As of today, I am a professional automotive photographer. Uh, I've been doing it. I've been doing photography for about almost three years now, actually. No, it actually just hit three years uh, in the new year. Nice. And um, I started as a street photographer, um, but Atlanta hates its city or hates its creators. So (laughs) I started shooting cars. And yeah, that's, that's just a, a quick rundown. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree, man. So I used to run a photography videography business. Um, and I think we were talking about uh, when we tried it earlier, but I used to try to go to caffeine and octane, which for those of you who don't know, is like the biggest car show, I think in the nation, but uh, it's, it's, I, held... in, I think in the Southeast, Southeast okay. for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, it's a huge car show, supercars, you know, hypercars. I think they had a Lexus LFA come recently. So stuff like that mm-hmm. is just insane. So uh, I would go to them and like stick my little business card in and, and try to, and like, you know, and, and like the only response I got was from a dude with a crappy like Ricer G35. <laughs> it's like, I'm not, Jesus. I don't want to, I don't want to shoot that, but it, it was hard, man. I mean, that that's a hard industry mm-hmm. to break into. And um, you know, so props to you for you're know, kind of building yourself up. But, you know, I came across your Instagram and I must have followed you way back when because, you know, I haven't really been in the car scene that much in the, the past recent mm-hmm. years. So I must have followed you way back when. But I saw your post. Um, I think it was a Supra or like your buddy Supra. And I was like, dude, I got to have this dude on because I started looking at your page and it was like crazy the stuff you're doing. And I was just super infatuated. You were in my area. Um, We're both in the Atlanta area and um, it's just super cool. So glad you were able to make it. But um, I'll kind of lead into kind of my first question. Maybe you touched on it a little bit, but can you talk (laughs) a little bit more in depth on how you got started and kind of what that process was for building your not not only your Instagram up, but your business up and being able to be a full time automotive photographer? So, um, as I alluded earlier, I, uh, started in January, 2020, 2020, as everyone does picks up a new hobby during that time, we forget about it. Like that year they didn't happen. And I started out with like a Canon Rebel T7, just walked around some parks. Um, if you're in the area of Atlanta, you probably know like, um, Roswell mill. And that's where like, I took my first couple of photos. I, I think they're still on my page actually. So and it wants to stock scroll scroll down all the way down there and um i actually got inspired by watching uh there's a guy his name's north borders um literally such a talented photographer uh would do a bunch of stuff with his friends and like document it and uh i saw that they were doing street photography and i've had this perso- this um idea that atlanta is not safe like you always hear it at night and then it took some major balls to like, you know, go out there 
and just go solo. Um, the first couple of times I always brought someone with me um, just to be safe and all that. And uh, I did that for about, I want to say like a year and a half, uh, doing street photography. I uh, got my first Sony camera and never looked back in like April of 2020. So I like already knew from then on, like that's what I was going to do. And um, as a street photographer, you don't really make any money. Like that's just, that's mm -hmm. just it. Like it's facts. Um, but it was a great way for me to network and uh, meet other people uh, because I thought I was the only person or only like individual out there doing street photography. And through that, um, a group, uh, a lot of people know it. If you're in Atlanta area now, ATL Shooters started from that, just bringing about 20 creatives in a small Instagram group that became like a hundred plus now. Um, and then like, I kind of stepped away from that because I knew at the end of the day, running a community like that was not my end goal, but there were other people who are way better at doing it. So shout out Tony. Um, definitely as a person you should definitely interview when you get the chance but um you know i made the switch about i think it's coming up to nine months now um it started with just shooting one bentley and then from then on it's like it was something new that i needed because street photography got so stale and there's so much you can do so many so many times you can walk through like the streets of atlanta and avoid the sketch areas so <laughs> um and then yeah it's like i started shooting cars and then i never never looked back yeah, that's awesome, dude. Are you familiar with um, Evan Ranft? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's what? What? That's an interesting reaction. <laughs> oh no, I I like what he's what, what he's done with uh, how he runs his business and all that, mm -hmm. and like um, you know how he kind of. I'd say if you're looking for street photography in Atlanta, he's like probably the number one person out you mm -hmm. look up. So, dude so um, i i followed him religiously back in like high school college type stuff um yeah. would love to have him on that would be that would be freaking awesome but yeah dude, dude that'd that, be awesome good luck with that dude i know right he's he's got an insane following so maybe that's a thing for a couple of years down the line but yeah man so i guess just kind of getting into photography what what are some tips that maybe you would give someone that maybe wants to start, you know, cause my channel is really tailored to social media marketing, um, mm -hmm. you know, marketing in general, social media tips, tricks, things like that. And kind of building a business around that. What if somebody mm -hmm. said like, saw this interview and was like, man, I, I like, okay, I want to do that. Like I want to start taking pictures, create a social media around it, build a business. What are some tips that maybe you would tell somebody that is starting from, you know, ground zero that wants to be where you are. So the number the number one tip I would give is to just do it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you can keep thinking and dreaming of doing, whether it be photography or anything in general, you know, like what you want to do, but it doesn't mean shit if you never start it because mm -hmm. then you just keep building on, building on from there. So just, you know, everyone has like an iPhone, like the camera's insane. Like it's, you can't really tell sometimes if it's like um, shot on an iPhone or shot on a camera, mm -hmm. but whatever you have, you know, go out there and shoot it. And if you don't want to do it alone, there's always a community out there that will, that will, you know, there are people out there who, who love to help people or give tips to people because um, for me personally, I can speak from personal experience uh, that when I first started out, like there was no one out there that I could learn from. And mm -hmm. as like the years went on and I started like, you know, learning a lot of things and started like connecting with other people in like the photography community in Atlanta, a lot of newcomers came and I found a lot of joy and fulfillment in like sharing tips and like sharing, giving them that extra, like, here, skip these couple of steps because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I went through the hardships and it's easy for you. This is what you need to learn or like right. this is what you could focus on and just like leading them down the right path they want to go to with whatever I can help them with. So, yeah, but yeah, ultimately just doing it, just going out there and doing it. And then if you really like it and the passion's there, like the money will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? that, that's, um, that's, that's, you know, we're dead on. I, I preach a lot on my channel too. Is like, I'll put out these videos and people will consume a lot of it. Like they'll consume probably mm -hmm. 10, 20 of my videos and mm -hmm. then never do anything. And like, then you just wasted, you know, a couple hours of your life watching videos. Yeah. Like there's so many people that watch, you know, if, if you're familiar with like Elon Godsey and Graham Stephan and uh, Sebastian Gord Georgiou and things like that. And like people who are motivational, like money making, you know, people mm -hmm. on like yeah. Jordan, Jordan Welch is another one. And it's like, there's people that will watch all these videos and those creators make those videos for the purpose of like inspiring others. But like 99% of the people will watch those videos for like 
you know, probably a cumulative of like a month and then just never do anything with it. And so it's like, yeah, yeah I like that, you know, start like you, you could become addicted to the process. Like when I started my <laughs> social media marketing agency, it was like a huge intimidation kind of thing. But once I got started and I had like a good offer and like proven results, I was like, dude, I want to like, I'm trying to scale mm -hmm. this baby. You know what I mean? So yeah, mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. cool, dude. Well, in terms of cars, I, I've, I've always been a car geek, a car nerd. Um, what mm -hmm. is your favorite from your experience? Well, I guess I'll ask two questions. What's your favorite car? Maybe a dream car. And then two, what's your favorite car to shoot or, or a car that you've shot in the, in the past? Okay. So a favorite car, um, man, I would have to like break it down to three different or two, well, I'd say two different, three different categories. You got your street cars, uh, you're like hyper cars or whatever, mm -hmm. super cars. Mm -hmm. And then just like that dream car you have. Yeah. So for street cars, um i know a car that i definitely enjoy shooting um is man i'm going through my list like any like g82 like the newest mm. bmw that came out it's mm. a really yeah there's like a little mixed opinion about the front grille but like other than that like the ones i've seen um are really clean and i mean you know like mm -hmm. it's a bmw as much as it gets a bad rap for just dream car an R34 GTR, hands down. Dude, same. Without, same. without a doubt, like most most of my photos are like inspired by like JDM type um, mm -hmm. like styles because like mm -hmm. we can't get them here. And then for like supercar, hypercar, NSX. Mm, nice, uh, yeah, the solid Honda list. Acura NSX. So solid those list. are like the three cars, and I've I've shot two out of the of them i'm still waiting mm -hmm. on the r34 gtr i mean they're not legal the closest mm -hmm. would be like an r32 gtr and yeah. even that was awesome to shoot do you like the r35 japanese um i like it i've shot it before it's um i don't know it's i've only shot a chance to shoot one okay and it wasn't my best shoot so like i'm kind of okay. like man i would want to redo it again but yeah. usually it's like a car is up there when I have a success, successful shoot with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. definitely. That's sick, dude. I, I love the G82. I've always, I think from the, when it, when it launched, I was like, same, kind of everybody like skeptical a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And then it came out and I'm watching like all these like automotive YouTubers, you know, get it on like delivery day. And I'm like, dude, DJ, TJ Hunts with the British green and the that's orange so inside. Clean. It's so yes. awesome. Like, yeah. that is, I, I, that's like the moment where I was like, Dang, like that thing is clean dude so it is really yeah clean. same here i i agree though the r34 is um is is like that that's you, you can't get better uh mm -hmm. as far as a super hyper car man i don't know man I'm not, i've never been like a huge like i've always been a fan of like the more affordable stuff like i was like mm -hmm. thinking like what okay what's actually attainable because like i'm probably not gonna go buy a bugatti you know what i mean probably yeah, yeah, not yeah. gonna happen uh, and like, what's something that's actually attainable? I don't know, man. I, I really like the, um, I like old Ferraris, like something I could probably get in the, in like, the, the, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> 40, yeah, maybe. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. That's crazy. Well, dude, um, that's super cool. I, I think that, you know, I want to, I want to keep following your stuff, man. It's, it's, um, it's cool. Every time I come across, I think you did a super shoot recently that I was looking at like the other day and I was like, bro, that like, dude, so talented. If you guys haven't checked his Instagram out, please go check it out. It's really a work of art. But speaking of your Instagram and kind of your, your brand as a whole, you know, how have you been able to grow to where you are right now? And I guess a follow-up question would be, how are you planning to, you know, do it even more in 2023? Is there a strategy behind it? Is it something that you're kind of just doing on the fly or maybe you, you got a hint of luck or, or how is, how has that worked out for you uh, so far? So how I got to where I'm at now, um, it was actually, a, I'd say a stroke of luck, but my definition of luck is completely different. It's I'm, I've heard this quote so many times. I always get it wrong. It's like luck is where preparation and something like come together and mm -hmm. that's what luck is. So, um, you know, at first it was like chasing a number and, you know, when you chase a number, you kind of lose sight. So mm -hmm. the second that I like switched my mindset, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do what I like to do. And then if I have this idea or like I see someone do something, I'll try to redo it. And I got to where I'm at because reels were starting to come out. Mm -hmm. And at 
at the time the bar wasn't set too high. It was like set pretty low. Like you can do a couple pictures with music, like you're set. <laughs> and um, I did that um, for like the first, for like one month. And I went from 2K all the way to 10K in a, ma- in a matter of two weeks. And it just came out of nowhere. Like one of like two of my reels hit like a million plus plays. Oh I'm just gosh. like, what? Mm-hmm. And I think what also helped was because at the time, uh, I'm so close with these with the boys. Um, Shots by Garrison and Huff Photography. Uh, they're like the the two other like I quote I'd say quote unquote gods of street photography in mm-hmm. Atlanta because they're just so good at what they do. And we all did something similar, so all of our like um, followings like um, cross cross pollinated. That's the mm-hmm. word, yeah. Mm-hmm. so um and you know people just love to see us do things and i guess everyone wanted to follow on like oh what are they doing this time it's like where are they at and all that yeah so that's how and then from 10k to 23 um it was actually 24 but i'm losing followers <laughs> sick um i don't oh no i think i just kept doing the real stuff and um when i got to 24 it kind of like the growth kind of stopped Mm-hmm. And I think that's where Instagram was like really pushing video over photo. And then I started yeah. losing followers and, you know, I never looked at the insights, thank God, because that would have destroyed my mental. Mm-hmm. But um, from then on, I was like, okay, you were never chasing a number. Why does it matter now? So um, that's when I was like, you have a, fo- I have like, I have a community now I consider who like follow me for what I do. Mm-hmm. And if I were to switch something and people were leave, I didn't want them in the first place, you know? definitely and then made the switch to like cars and then like now it's just, i don't really have a strategy it's now it's like it helps nowadays that you have a huge following um at, to kind of it doesn't what's i'm looking for um it doesn't prove anything it just helps you like reach out to smaller people or like other brands saying oh they have a, a following but not maybe not all of them are like engaged or whatever you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah yeah and if you have definitely. a following and if you have a following and dope work, like people are going to like have their eyes are going to be on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's great. I mean, I always try to preach the importance of building a personal brand while you're bu- you know, building a business. Um, and, mm-hmm. and for, you know, automotive photography, it kind of go, goes along with, you know, what you do. I mean, your business is your personal brand. So it's like, you kind of just mm-hmm. simultaneously, you know, building that, but a community is so valuable, not only mm-hmm. for, your mental because it's like you know people want to talk about the money you may make with the more followers you have but it's like mm-hmm. at the end of the day you know there is a little part of your ego that's like dang i got twenty four thousand followers. you know what i mean it's like it, it, it yeah. helps your kind of like mental state that'll help you you know that'll translate into better work that'll translate into the amount of money you make so you know an audience can be you know utilized from a uh, a monetization perspective whether you're like you know going to create a coaching business or maybe somebody of somebody knows somebody that can connect you to somebody that's a new client and so mm-hmm. there's so many different revenues of like the benefits of having a huge audience and and like you said reels blowing up your account it seems like um you know you you've been able to capitalize on that pretty well so um mm-hmm. congrats to all the success man it's that's super cool thank you so uh an interesting question that i had cuz i when i ran my photography business i was probably getting like two to three shoots a month it really was like a super 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 side thing <laughs> no i know i know i know it was like not much at all what you know, on an average month for you and, and, you know, for somebody that does it full time, what does like a week look like? You know, what's the average amount of shoots that you may have in a week or month? And I guess, you know, another follow-up question is, is there, is there something that you'd like to increase in 2023? Do you have more capacity or are you like at your limit where you're like, bro, I need to hire somebody? Um, let's see. So for a regular week, um, naturally I am one who's very spontaneous. So like, you know, I like to go with the flow or like if I, you know, if I don't want to shoot one day, I'll be like, okay, I don't want to shoot one day. Mm-hmm. Um, if I want to shoot, I just reach out to the list of people that I follow mm-hmm. or like who follow me that mm-hmm. are in the area and hit them up. So usually it's like a week would, on a good, good week would consist of two shoots a week. Okay. Um, whether you be paid or not, or not, um, just to get out there and, you know, keep doing, um, just keep working on what I do um Mm -hmm. so like you know yeah two days out of the week on a good one is like i'll be shooting most of the time um usually the day after i'm at like a coffee shop um just editing the photos Mm -hmm. or you know 
like getting inspiration or whatever. And then, um, you know, spend time with my girlfriend, spend time with friends and family and all that. But it's mostly like trying to hit a perfect balance of like a work life balance, especially yeah. as your like your own business, mm-hmm. as you say. Yeah. Um, to build upon like the whole little bit I said about paid or not, I'm a huge advocate, especially when you are starting out or just wanna get into a, like a creative, a creative business. Is working for free makes you the most money? And what I mean by that is, I heard this from um, the Five Hundred Five podcast that's where I learned all my stuff and how to like kind of uh, operate my, a biz, my business you could say is sometimes like a transaction doesn't always have to be monetary. Like, yes, it's nice to have the money, but you also have to uh, balance out that maybe that, you know, they might know someone, like you said, that might that, like link you up with another client word of mouth. In my opinion, word of mouth is way more important than just a number. Because if someone can verbally back you, like they have your, they're putting their faith in you. And if they're like good relations with the person they're talking to, it's like, it's just like, you're already up there, like on their choice. So, um, yeah, that's just my piece on like, you know, working for free or like working for less than you expect, because, you know, you never know if someone can afford what you're capable of, but you can, but you see value in that. You see the value they provide that outside of money you mm-hmm. see what i'm saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's pretty much it. and like if you're starting out you need to have the portfolio it's mm-hmm. like how else are you gonna get better like right you know you gotta yeah. go out there you might get a couple no's a couple yeses you might get a couple bucks might not but like at the end of the day if you really like what you do you will find a way to be better and like sell yourself to someone or like stand out from the rest of the crowd Absolutely, dude. I love that. I, I I feel like Gerard, we have the same mindset, dude, because I tell the same thing on my channel. I'm like, bro, when you're starting a business, you're not going to go, especially if you don't have any work, like case studies or portfolio, whatever it may be, like, mm-hmm. bro, you're not going to be making 10K a month, you know, next month. It's just uh-huh. not going to happen. You have to work uh-huh. for free. One of my clients is a, um, uh, is still to this day, a paddleboard company. And I mm-hmm. back in, I think it was May, I had never run advertising for my agency. Like this is something that I was super interested in. I have a huge marketing background, but I was like, you know, I want to get into ads, but I don't have any portfolio. So I reached out to this paddleboard company and I was like, let me run your ads. I'll do it for like a month for free. And if you love my services, like if I do well, you know, we can work out a contract from there. But if not, like no strings attached, like this is my background. I, I've got a good whatever. And then like mm-hmm. I kicked butt. And he didn't, he didn't pay me for that first month, but he sent me like one of his paddle boards, which like is $800. <laughs> and yeah. it was like, he, he felt bad. Cause he was like, dude, I have to pay you something. So it was, I was just like, all right, send me, send me a board. Like, you know, like whatever, like, so it, it all that stuff kind of just works out and he's still a client to this day. And like mm-hmm. you said, that long, that lifetime value of that customer or client, um, stemmed from me reaching out and saying like, let me work for you for free. So it's like, yeah, you might not be making money in the immediate uh, you know, in the, in the, in the short run, but that customer has turned into a huge client, uh, for 2022 for me, because, you know, you get in with one service, you can start adding multiple. And, and I love that. And, and it's all about networking, especially when you're in a city, like, and you, you want to work locally. It's like mm-hmm. on, online, it's great to have net, net networks and it's, it's great to have networks anywhere, but like online, it's great. But when you're in a city like Atlanta, where, you know, a lot of business ventures happen through connections and things like that, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, a person that knows a person that could be like a cornerstone of how you're going to change your brand and your business, you know, this following year. So I I love that, dude. Um, What what is an average, I guess, for like for for a paid photo shoot? What do you charge? And like, like, what would you tell somebody that is starting out that may not be at the level that you're at? But what do you charge for the level that you're at? And then what would you recommend somebody that's beginning to charge? So for my rates, um, I usually charge between 200 to 225 uh, mm-hmm. per shoot. Um, I do it per session rather than per hour. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, um, you know, I have faith that, you know, what I'm capable of will not be mm-hmm. a waste of the person's time. Mm-hmm. Usually it won't even take like two hours to do a shoot. Um, but I do it in a packaging to where um, now that I have like a network of other car photographers who also want to, who are trying to build the portfolios, or let's say I have a couple friends that, you know, um, need extra money. I would pitch first a stills 
like you just the car as is but then the teamwork aspect comes in when i shoot rollers so like mm -hmm. for those who don't know you two cars you got the camera car where i'm in and the other car and you're just shooting that car in movement and um now for 2023 i'm starting to implement video um i posted one monday of uh super john john's uh new supra it was like a, a little reel and um you know i'm starting to implement that mm -hmm. because i need i it's something new to learn but also something i could um increase my rates because i have now have a somewhat video background or understanding of how to shoot video so that's just like a typical shoot for me and then you know there are times where let's say i'm in a phase where i recently i was in a jdm phase to so where i would provide discounted shoots for jdm cars because one i just want to shoot you know some nice cars and maybe those people people who weren't able to shoot that wanted to shoot with me um maybe they don't have that extra like 50 dollars, but then they hear a discount shoot okay cool like you know again providing them value and like yeah i may be getting less but i can still you know make a connection or a relationship with that person and who knows where it can go you know so that's usually how my rates are and then like they vary depending on person to person like i try to i try to accommodate um clients based on you know what they need or what they would like mm -hmm. in, in my power um because at the end of the day i am providing a service and i am providing my art but i want to make sure that i have at least a little bit of influ um of the owner's influence of what they see or what they would like you know where to be mm -hmm. location or what part of town they're at or like there's a vibe they're going for like you know if they if they're i want to make sure i provide them something that they're happy with mm -hmm. now to answer your other question about someone who's starting out uh it's hard to say how much you should charge because one like i said earlier if you don't have the work to back it up no one is going to pay you <laughs> no one is going to pay you you got to go to, you got to go out there like whether it be car meets you know at a car meet if some you see someone you want to shoot with get in contact mm -hmm. with them and be like hey i would like to shoot your car this time and like don't expect to get paid if you're starting out don't because if you're expecting money you're chasing the money that's all you're mm -hmm. looking for and you're setting yourself for failure at the end of the day there's so many times where i've seen photographers be like oh it's like it's like my rates are going up because uh not many people are paying i was like there's probably a reason why no one's paying you <laughs> and then i would look at the i'll look at their stuff i'm like all right what are you trying to market where is it no one can find it like you know yeah so um people you just gotta have the work to back up how much how much you think you're worth absolutely yeah absolutely yeah, i love it i love it i think also roping in video is smart because when you look at the way that you know not only social media but just kind of the popularity of of the internet nowadays short form content mm -hmm. is huge i mean it's just going to grow it's oh, just going to yeah. continue growing so if you can it's kind of rope that in and say like you know, I'll do like some short form stuff that, you know, you can distribute to TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, like, bro, that is like, he can make some mm -hmm. bucks off that. And like, there's tons of agencies out there that'll edit it for you. And, and mm -hmm. um, so there's just so many like alleyways. And it's so I, I always tell people, like, if you're not making at least like, two to three thousand dollars a month online just like through all that stuff that you're doing like get into it bro because there's so many alleyways there's so many things that you can okay. do and from your perspective just like what you do you know it's a high ticket thing and the fact that you're able to offer that to people who you know realistically have sick cars are probably like good business owners themselves mm -hmm. like that like that itself is like you're getting yourself into a good market yeah. because it's like those people are probably successful if they can afford that kind of stuff um but or i want to talk have like uh they have connections with whoever is like giving them parts you know like right right yeah raise wheels or like you know exhaust or whatever like mm -hmm. or the exactly. shop they go to like mm -hmm. you know exactly exactly so speaking more a little bit about video and i'll, and I'll kind of wrap this up with uh with this question but you know you do have a youtube um what is one way that you want to grow your youtube this year and maybe you know maybe it is that short form maybe it's shorts maybe it's kind of just the distribution of reels and and kind of doing all that stuff that's very popular right now mm -hmm. but is you know what's your kind of game plan because for somebody that hasn't checked out your channel it's super super cool to see that kind of behind the scenes insight on like a creative 
aspect of like automotive photography like that is an art mm -hmm. and so it's really cool to kind of get to see your perspective of it and i think there's a lot of value behind it um what how do you want to grow it and what's your what are your kind of goals for 2023 so youtube wise it's honestly not my main focus it's just mm -hmm. i i see youtube as a way for me to get the creative juices going as if like learning how to shoot video or like, mm -hmm. let's say photography is stale and I want to work on something new. It's like, I can always go back to photography, but you know, the more skills I pick up, where it be editing, color grading, whatever, it's like, it's adds more value to myself as, you know, a business. So YouTube is kind of just there if I want to do it, mm -hmm. mostly focusing on like short form content, like reels and tick and TikToks, because I feel like it's easy it, it's a great way and a great entry level to learn vid, videography by doing it on a smaller scale than a full out 20 minute like mm -hmm. s log color yeah. grade like cutting like matching like you know work again like i said work, steps working your way up you know from mm -hmm. you know from small video bigger video the more it goes and like maybe down the line like maybe i don't want to do video but at least i gave it mm -hmm. a chance right you know? instead of right. full diving buying an a7s3 with like a 16 to 35 g master and then plummeting my credit score because mm -hmm. like you know it's not really something i want to do so yeah it's just more video to learn the process and um you know i've always been one person when i'm interested in something i want to learn the ins and outs about mm -hmm. and then see how i can incorporate it if i want to do it and um yeah that's like that's like it pretty much just more short form content, um, kind of blending the photography side with videography, mm -hmm. um, but still, still, all, still being a photography focused, um, creator Absolutely. because I mean, everyone's doing video, mm -hmm. but like everyone does photos too, but not everyone is good at it. So, well, and, and you, and you make some sick photos, dude. You, you really do. I appreciate so, it. Yeah, of course, bro. Well, wishing you all the success in 2023. Um, for you guys watching, uh, go follow Gerard on all the social media platforms. Those will be linked down below, but Gerard, thank you so much for coming on, man. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I, I think for I speak for all of us that, you know, we're looking forward to all the success that you're going to, you're going to have in 2023. Mm -hmm. Thanks guys.